Okay, the third, seeking strength for your heart to withstand life's tests. This is a big one. Every day we're tested. Sometimes the tests are small, sometimes the tests are big. But let's talk about big tests. What, what are some big tests in life? Call them out. Death is a big, de death in the family, death of a loved one, death of a friend. Other tests? Money related, money problems. Hmm? Sickness, illness, sure. Failure, disappointment, you know. But you know, exam is not a, well, but it is a test. Yeah. Natural disaster, also be an exam on Friday. <laughs> 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 Family and kids can be a test. Relationships can be tests, right? We can have trouble with our parents sometimes. We can have trouble with spouses, trouble with siblings, trouble with friends. Uh, isolation can be a test. You feel lonely. You feel like nobody understands you. You feel everybody hates you. Addiction can be a test, sure. Now, the idea here is these tests, when people are going through a hard time, what do they need? Again, call it out. Comfort, solace, support, someone to talk to, someone to vent to. You know how many people come up to me and say, I need to talk to you for two minutes? That's usually two hours. I have this thing that I can only talk to you about. No one else on the planet will understand my problem, except you, because you're on YouTube. <laughs> but what, in, in all reality, not to, not to dismiss people's issues, People need someone to talk to. And people more than anything else need someone to give them hope. Show them a light at the end of the tunnel. Convince them that they can get through this. They are stronger than the trial that they're facing. That the, whatever they're going through, this is, there has to be some good in it. You know? They need that and they need somebody to say that in a loving way, in a kind way, in a comforting way. You know? And when that kind of comfort and love, it comes from someone with more authority. Like, you know, when your younger brother says that to you, like, eh. But when your grandfather says it to you, it means something more. When your dad says it to you, when your teacher says it to you, when a great scholar says it to you, it's just kind of, okay. And the husband says, I've been saying that to you all this time. It didn't mean nothing. And he said the same exact thing. And all of a sudden, oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> Why? Because when somebody from a position of authority comforts you, the, author the comforting itself is authoritative. One of the roles of the Qur'an in the life of a believer is, I'm having trouble. I need someone to comfort me. And guess what is going to comfort you? The word of Allah is going to comfort you. You're going to open up the Qur'an and you're going to read something and it's going to bring you comfort exactly in regards to your trial. One of my best friends in life, in, in back in New York, I won't tell you his name because this recording will go up somewhere and he'll see, hey, you mentioned my name. So I'm not going to tell you his name. Uh, but he's from Bayshore, Long Island. Anyway, so, <laughs> so, so he told some one time, like, this is like maybe 12 years ago, he's like, hey, so, how do we get guidance from the Qur'an? I need guidance from the Qur'an. How do you, where do you begin? What do you look up like an index? If you have problems with patience, read these ayat. If you have problems with health, read these ayat. What do you do? I was like, hey, try this, try this. Next time you have a problem, just have a mushaf with you, a copy of Qur'an with you, and just randomly open any page and start reading. But read with the intention that you're looking for Allah to give you comfort, to give you guidance. This is guidance to the heart. Just read, see what happens. Two weeks in a row, every night I meet him at Isha, he says, Hey, yo bro, it worked again. Yo man, it worked again, it's crazy. People don't know about this, man. This is so crazy, I had this problem, and I was reading, and like third eye I read, I was like, whoa! That's exactly what I was... <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be. But it, Quran will not give you that if you come to it as a critic, remember? Quran would only give you that when you come to it as a seeker. Oh, it'll give you comfort. It'll become your companion. And that salah will be therapy. That salah will be, you know, you could go see a counselor and then you could go talk to Allah. And Allah will talk to you. It's, it'll become a thing of beauty. That's really, you know, when you, uh, you can learn Quran. You can internalize it, you can, you can understand a lot of Qur'an. You know when you really taste Qur'an is when this therapy happens. And a lot of times this therapy happens in the middle of Salat. That's the most, those are the most beautiful moments in a believer's life. When those moments happen, when the ayah hits you like a lightning bolt about the exact problem you were having. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's a high. <laughs>